Whoa! What was that? What's going on, everybody? Welcome to the Apex E-Series Showdown here on Thursday night. If it's Thursday, you know where we're going to be. And that is right here on VSRN. And it's brought to you by Apex Sim Racing Custom Gear. Well, all right. Well, after a crazy, a wild and crazy... Um, uh, Bristol Martinsville race we are back at it at a bigger track <laughs> at Texas uh, last week was very difficult um, yeah Martinsville I did a race last night 250 laps 33 cautions took almost three hours so it's just Martinsville baby that's the way it works here on our racing but uh, we're glad to have y'all here tonight so we got a little bit bigger track here yeah uh, Texas Motor Speedway. Let's take a look at your point standings at the moment. Jonathan Cofield did pick up the win last week, and Daniel Cunningham sitting there in second, but you look 65 points from Cofield down to Cunningham. Now, uh, Cofield's in good shape right here. <laughs> He's, uh, you know, almost two races based on the field size, and uh, he's got a gap to second place, so he's doing good. Uh, but once the playoffs get around, it kind of resets, so... Um, He's got a, a pretty good shot at the, uh, I would say, the the uh, regular season championship for sure. Texas Motor Speedway. We got qualifying going right now, so we'll go ahead and jump right in and uh, see what some of these guys are doing and see how it's going. On board with Charles Stevens. He tries to lay down a couple fast laps and watch on board with him. Right to the yellow line. We'll take a look at the times currently. Cofield on top over four one thousandths of a second over Chris McLean. So it is tight up at the top. You see first through fifth, less than a tenth. Wide open in three and four. You're going to lift just slightly in one and two. Gas it up as soon as you can. Carry that momentum all the way down the straightaway here. We'll see it, what Charles can do as he crosses the line. And jumps up to seventh place after that run Ray Rogers here tonight got him out on the track it's always good when Ray shows up me and Ray a teammate over at the Sunoco Cup Series so uh, he is always a threat when it comes to Texas one of his favorite tracks uh, he knows how to get around this place we'll watch on board with him as he's got just a couple minutes he'll be able to make it just in time but gonna try to lay down the heater here let's watch how it's done Just a really small lift as he comes off a of turn two. Oh, gets right out to the wall. And then it is flat out through three and four. Holder wide open right down to the white line. Good looking lap as he comes off a of turn number four. He's going to cross the line. We'll see where he qualifies. First lap, good enough for 16th. Let's see if this heater on lap number two is good enough to get him. He's got to make up a little over four tenths on this second lap. Coming out of turn four, we'll see where Ray can put the number 51 machine. He crosses the line and just a little improvement. It looks like just enough for 13th position. So Jonathan Cofield will be your pole sitter here tonight. He'll win the Chuck Pegleg Pole Award as uh, we've just got about a minute left in, uh, in this session, and then we'll jump right into qualifying. Well, we'll take a look at the schedule while we're waiting and uh, waiting for everything to kind of swap back over. But well, we're quite a few races into this uh, season so far. You see right here at Texas, about a little over midway. Still got Kansas. Now, the next run of tracks is really a lot of fun. Um, I think maybe the four tracks after Texas may be my four favorite. If you put them all together, that may be the best four tracks that you can get. I think maybe you take out Wilkesboro, put a little Dover in there, and uh, I'd love to be a part of that uh, four race run. But Kansas... So much fun in the trucks, in the cup car, in the Xfinity car. It really is hard to beat Kansas. Uh, can't wait 
uh, do some racing there myself. Darlington, God. Uh, how do you not love Darlington? It's a it's a beast. It's tough to deal with. It's tough to, uh, um, you know, if you don't finish the race, but finish without any damage, and it's tough to, to run up front at, at Darlington. But once you win a race there, once you kind of get it figured out, boy, it sure is a blast. North Wilkesboro, I think, is a lot of fun. We'll see how it is in the trucks. Uh, after Martinsville, it's got me a little bit nervous, but then Charlotte is always a good time. Then we head to Worldwide Tech, Nashville, Pocono, Lucas Oil, Richmond. That's a tough five races. So, now I wouldn't be thrilled about those, but then we jump right into the playoffs. You see a nice little spread there in the playoffs. So we'll see who comes away with it. But let's talk about the grid right here. Let's see who's going to start on the front row. And that's Jonathan Cofield. We talked about it already. Chuck Peg Lake Pole Award winner. As you jump into the low cash motorsports starting grid, Chris McLean outside of row number one. Row number two is going to be Aaron Adcock. Got that number 17 machine up in the third spot with Josh Lukovitz in fourth. Fifth, going to be Tracy Passens with Gary Kinder in sixth. Seventh, Charles Stevens Jr. and Daniel Cunningham in eighth. Ninth is Christian Deadman, Stacey Holmes in tenth place. Eleventh is going to be Lucas Lyons, Chuck Pick, Lick Feltz in the twelfth spot. Ray Rogers going to roll off 13th, Alan Smith in the 14th position. 15th, Matt Rogers with Alan Nash in 16th. 17th, Jeremiah Holt, Kyle Roberts in the 18th position. 19th going to be Johnny Cofield and Brandon Wallace. And then rounding out your field is going to be Tony Edgerton in that number 77 machine. Thank you to Low Cash Motorsports for the Little grid there. Well, everybody getting gridded up here, getting in the cars, getting their their stuff situated. This is the point in the race where the nerves really kick in. And you say, my goodness, all right, it's time to go. Got to think about what you're trying to do. Have a few laughs, try to make it, uh, keep it light. But make sure your seat's right. I got old chair. It's got wheel locks on them. So I get over here and I start locking my wheels. So getting ready to roll. Get you, Check your wheel. Make sure it's tight. Make sure you can't yank it off the the uh, the desk if you got one. Um, get those nerves in order. You're going to be hammered down here in the first little bit of this. Take a look at your race analysis. 120 laps here tonight. Four tire sets available to green, white, checkered attempt. 75% fuel load. I think that'll be an interesting uh, development with the way this truck is going to handle. I think... You'll start to see the tires go away a little bit earlier than normal as that kind of takes weight out of the back and makes the truck a little bit tighter a little bit sooner. Uh, fixed setup, of course, and then that stage break in lap 25, the top 10, will be gaining stage points. So if you're thinking about playoff runs, uh, yeah, you definitely want to get those stage points. Is uh, They will mean a whole lot once we get to each round of the playoffs. Well, it's good to be back at a uh, a bigger track. I think we'll have a better race than what we had at Martinsville. Martinsville is just one of those races where you show up, you know what it's going to be, and you head, you, you kind of tuck your tail, head on to the next week, and move on. There doesn't need to be a whole bunch of books about what we need to fix. It's Martinsville, baby. That's the way it's going to be. But we are here at Texas. Got a great show for you tonight. Looking forward to some really awesome racing. Jonathan Cofield's going for three in a row here tonight. Sun's starting to set. Lights are going to come on, on soon. Track, track's going to do a little bit of changing. We're green flag here in Apex. Lap number one in the books, and Jonathan Cofield takes the top spot. And you can already kind of see this track is very draft heavy. Uh, you'll see a big pack for a while. It'll take about 10, 15 laps before it starts to break apart. But you can see some drivers already pushing the issue. Here comes Josh Lokovic. Got to run. Goes down to the inside. And he's going to try to take over third position. And you can see how that bottom line is so fast early on as they're wide open. I don't think we'll see any body tried outside line it's maybe just to defend that position later on in a run one and two the most important 
This right here, where we're watching them go in right now, is the most important part of this track. And you can see Chris McClain getting a little out of shape. Both him and Josh Lukovitz get out of shape as they're trying to run down. But here comes Garrett Kinder down on the inside to make it three wide. And he gets that position without much issue at all. So Poban looking strong up here at the front. And Garrett Kinder looks like he wants to look for a little bit more. The draft here just makes, gives you that super band feeling here early because in turns three and four, you're pretty much wide open. I mean, you're not lifting at the moment. And you'll see here, uh, Garrett Kinder's going to get a nice run here and you get that draft. It's almost like a super speedway. And then right here, you got to make the decision. After a couple laps, do you go full throttle through here or do you start to lift just a little bit? You lift off just to kind of take the pressure off that right front tire try to save those tires to the end of the run what do you do when do you pull out and try to make a pass also that's also a big uh big uh, decision here is yeah you can make a pass almost every lap and we see garrett kinder been able to make a move here on tracy passons but it's been kind of backing off and trying to stay in line and just be patient and wait for those tires start to fall off chris mcclain has recovered and is now pushing back up towards Cofield. But Cofield has the best position out front. Uh, so I think, oh, my goodness, Garrett Kinder's getting loose. Going through the grass, goes to 13. He's trying not to hit the inside wall, but he locks up the front end. And the 13, hard in the inside wall. He's going to come to a stop. Would love to see a caution. Not going to get one. And that 13, he's going to spin out. And not not uh, not gonna be able to get it. it. Looks like caution not coming out. Because here comes the uh, the field back around as he's gonna lose the lap most likely. And I'd be interested to know if he has got some damage. I mean, he's definitely got some damage. He slid right into the inside wall. There he is coming off a of turn four. He really needs that caution, but he needs to just stay in. He does have a fast repair. We do have those in this series, and nobody's going to go a lap down before the stage break. So Garrett, while I know he's probably frustrated he didn't get that caution, he's going to see he's going to stay up out of the way here. Uh, he will be the lucky dog if he can stay just one lap down. Uh, he'll get back on the lead lap, so... You can definitely tell he's missing some speed, the, the, the front end not wanting to uh, cooperate. So, just needs to get the lap 25. He can stay up to speed and not go another lap down, which I think he should be able to. He's definitely running fast enough. Uh, I think he'll be okay. But up front, it is still Jonathan Cofield as he leads here. You see Stacy Holmes going down to the inside of Lokovitz. He is... Got a big run. Now Lokovitz gets a run. He's going to look down to the inside. No patience out of some of these guys. They're like, I'm ready to go. I'm going to race. And that track position is going to be important. As the tires start to wear, they get to the end of this stage. Uh, tire wear will start to pick up, and you'll start to see who used the tires up a little bit more than they needed to. And so Lokovitz is thinking, well, if I want to be, I need to be up at the front. Once that starts happening, I have to have some good track position. So, not quite able to make that pass. The Tracy Pass is now going to go side by side with his teammate, Aaron Adcock, as they're battling for that third position. Not really sure what happened to Garrett Kinder. He I, he just had some sort of. Um, we saw him get loose there. I don't know if he had made contact or just was trying to keep it off of somebody and then just kept overcorrecting, couldn't get really catch it, and then locked up the front tires when he did. That truck was just going straight and went right into the inside wall. Let's go back and check that out. Oh, well, we got a battle for the lead. We'll come back. Chris McClain going around the outside. We'll see if that works in turn one and two. He may end up losing second out of that ordeal. Not quite able to do it. See, Lokovitz get a little bit loose, but the run off the corner. Chris McClain trying to set up Cofield. He's going to go down to the inside. Cofield will be able to fight off a little bit now that the tires have started to wear. You're not able to be as full throttle, but McClain going to come off the corner, going to have a little bit of help from Tracy Passons 
And as they go down in one, two, I tell you, that high side, I don't think it's going to have much teeth. You're going to go down into the corner. I think Cofield's got a nice little run. I, I take it back. He gets a big run off of turn two, able to keep the, the throttle down, and he is going to have almost half a car length nose out ahead as they continue to battle for this lead here on lap 13. Hell, last week we were like four cautions in, so I love this. And you're starting to see with them battling side by side, you're starting to see the whole pack, how quickly everybody started to catch back up to this front group as they start battling up here. As, oh, Tracy passes out of shape. And we're going board with Stacey Holmes. He is in the hornet's nest. Battle for the lead is still on. Cofield holding on tight to that lead, trying not to let it go. He does have a gap back behind McLean. So right now, if they do end up having to settle it at some point, uh, they're actually somehow pulling away, running side by side here. Chris McLean has a nice dive down to the inside, but not going to be able to clear him just yet as Cofield still has a nose on that five on the outside. So... I feel like this is two juggernauts that we're going to be talking about a lot tonight, kind of planting their flag on, hey, I know I'm here to win. No, I'm here to win. And McLean, uh, man, he had him cleared, but just a paper, paper-sized gap that he could have slid up in front of that 58th a little bit too early for a slide job like that. I think McLean knew that. And he's going to drop back down to the bottom as, man, Cofield really showing some strength here on the outside. Well, it's good to have some green flag racing. I tell you that right now. We are so happy to, to be doing that as we continue to watch this battle for the lead. Tracy Pass is now joining this little group. We'll see what he decides to do. A little bit of drafting help to McLean down the front straightaway. Not really much you can do. Oh, as McLean gets a little bit loose with Tracy right on his back bumper. Does save it, but I think Cofield may be able to take over this lead. Cofield successfully defends that race battle for the lead and uh, takes back the top spot. And like I said, let's go back and see what happened to Garrett Kinder because uh, we really didn't get a great, uh, great look at that. Yeah, it just gets loose in the quad oval. I mean, it was all by himself. I don't think he had any contact. And uh, it was actually off the throttle. That was very weird. And once he gets in the grass, I mean, there's nothing he could do and goes right down to the inside wall. I'm, I'm not sure what happened. I don't think Josh made any contact. Checking a replay out right here. As we get down to five laps to go in this stage, just trying to figure out maybe what happened. And I don't know. Did he shift down? It's hard to say. I have no idea. But regardless, we go back to live racing. Cofield able to hold him off. And now we got a battle here for fourth place. That's between Aaron Atcock and Stacey Holmes. And the third U truck has been on the move, up six positions where he started. Trying to hang on to the fourth spot as Aaron Atcock now working to the end. You're starting to see everybody spread out just a little bit. As the tires start to wear. But we're going to have a stage break here, so everything that you've been learning, you got to apply really, really quick here. As uh, I would imagine, we're going to see some green flag racing here tonight. And, uh, man, uh, a, a, a race that goes... Green flag beside the stage caution all the way to the end. Boy, I'll take it. This battle continues side by side. This is for the fourth position. And that outside line looks pretty stout, that's for sure. Is Stacey Holmes going to be able to 
take that spot. Let's go check in on Garrett Kinder. He is currently, looks like in one and two as Cofield is crossing the line. So it does look like Garrett Kinder is going to be able to get down pit road, get that fast sprint, get the lucky dog. And not in that order, though. He'll have to do it uh, in a different order, but he'll, he'll get back on the lead lap. So uh, sigh of relief for Garrett Kinder as it could have gone really, really badly. Back here, it has been a fight all night long. Lucas Lyon is on the move, so it's Ray Rogers. And right behind him, Daniel Cunningham, who had caught up to that front pack there earlier in the race, but maybe got those tires a little bit too hot, or, or um, you know, I'm not real sure, but he's starting to fall back now. So might have pushed it a little bit too hard early or just not feeling confident. Alan Nash was on the move too, and he is kind of stalled out. So, oh man, you can see those trucks look loose. Ray Rogers almost wrecks it off a of turn number two. But up front, it is Jonathan Cofield who will cross the line. And when they throw the caution, which should be in the next, next couple corners. And there it is. So your stage one winner. Well, the only stage, but the stage winner is Jonathan Cofield to get all those points. McLean going to get second. Tracy Passons third. Tr uh, Stacey Holmes in fourth. Aaron Adcock in fifth. Lucas Lyons, Josh Lukovitz, Daniel Cunningham, Ray Rogers, and Alan Nash, your top ten. They will all score stage points. Well, I've, I know that tires will be uh, on the menu here under this caution. And with it being sort of a shorter run, you know, it's give you time to go down, check those tires, go down pit road, get four tires, get fuel, and see what the tires look like. Now, I, you know, I'll be interested to see. There's only four sets of tires in the race. Um, I wonder if we'll see anybody come down pit road and not take tires at all. That might be a strategy call here. Uh, it's going to hurt you on this first little run, but if we have some cautions, it may, you know, go in your favor. But honestly... The way the race is looking, I don't know if we'll see any cautions. Um, so that would be a big negative if it goes green to the end. So I think coming down here, taking four tires and fuel, I think is the right call under this stage break. I think if you have a quick caution or a 10, 15 lap caution, uh, you might stay out or just get fuel only. But I think here the, the call is definitely four tires and fuel. But you'll go down pit road. Once the uh, tires get put on the car, you can actually go into the little black box inside your car. And you can look and see what the temperatures were and the percentage whenever they took the tires off. So you can look at your tire wear, see if you've been pushing too hard. You can adjust your um, your driving style. You've been you pushed it a little bit too hard on the entry of one. Well, your your right front's going to be a little bit more worn. Compare it to your teammates and then decide. Okay, I need to take it a little bit easier this time. Um, or you know, if you're somebody like uh, Cunningham who started to fall back, maybe say, okay, what did I do wrong? What do I need to fix? this time around four tires fuel this the call for pretty much everybody as they all come rolling off a of pit road and garrett kinder will get the lucky dog and he'll get the catch up to the field to go down pit road and i know he is dying to get that fast repair to get that uh suspension fixed but he's gonna have a long road back to the front if he's gonna get back up there and he's got to be careful that he doesn't end up the same situation he did before where he hit the inside wall early in the uh, the race. Oh, so what we're finding out, thanks to uh, Kevin Kinder in chat, uh, is that the dog jumped, his dog jumped on him while he was going down the front straightaway. So that's why it looked weird. And I looked, it was weird to see Garrett Kinder spin out on the straightaway, but that's what happened. So the dog jumped on I me, mean, stuff that real, NASCAR drivers don't have to deal with. I mean, they're sitting there in their cockpits that are molded right to their butts. You don't have to deal with stuff that we got to deal with in the sim racing world, and that's your dog. <laughs> your dog jumping up on you while uh, you're trying to race. So that's what happened to Garrett Kinder, but he's got that fast repair. He's, he's got the lucky dog. He's back on lead lap, so he's back into this thing. And can bring that 13 all the way to the front. Goes down pit road. Four tires fuel. You see that bumper kind of poop out. As he gets a brand new truck. 
Once you get, so if you have a little bit of body damage, you know, you can sometimes get away without using that fast repair. Let them fix on it a little bit. Um, but as hard as he hit, the damage is going to be pretty substantial. And you don't want to get in a position where you go down pit road and, and you have required repairs. So if you go down pit road and you come to a complete stop in the box, uh, you will have, unfortunately, you'll have, uh, you'll have to sit there in pit road until the required repair is done. Um, so it is a gamble. You really have to be good at assessing what the damage is like on your truck before you come down pit road because if you think, oh, you know, it's not so bad. Let me see if I could save that fast repair. And you come back down and there's 20 minutes of required repairs. Yeah, that's your, that's going to be your race. And you can't get out of it. Um, so you got to feel it out. There is a little bit of skill in trying to decide, okay, is this a little bit of body damage? Can I get it fixed? Or is it pretty, pretty rough? And we saw Garrett Kinder not really able to keep it straight down the straightaway. So a lot of uh, suspension damage and makes the right call gets that fast repair and now gonna have to be careful but that was a pretty uh extraordinary situation there and i think we'll probably have that settled for the second run so i don't think this is going to be a, a caution field race like what we saw last week i think it's going to be a lot of strategy we're probably going to get a where i know we're at least going to have one pit stop here as we've got 90 laps to go once we take green flag uh, which should be just about one stop. But, um, you know, if they can only run 40, 40, 42, 43 laps, we might see a little fuel strategy here. Split this race into to one stop. Some folks might try two. We'll see what they decide to do. And I'll be interested to see if the pace is the same this time. I'd like to think that after looking at your tires, uh, that pace may slow down just a little bit as uh, guys are going to be really thinking about the long run. Long, you know, at least two long green flag runs. You want to save those tires. And if fuel is close, like I said, 45 laps at 75% fuel, I think it could be pretty close. So uh, we'll see if people are running way off the pace. Uh, fuel strategy may be be something that's going on. But green flag is back out. Here in stage number two. And we'll take you all the way to the finish here. Cofield with a good jump. Actually a little detrimental to get a massive jump like that because McLean's going to have a big run as he uses that draft down the straightaways. He'll get a massive run down in three and four and he might have enough to get around you out of four. He's going to get right to his back bumper. Look at Stacy Holmes up on the outside, maybe trying to get a run here on Chris McClain. Well, they, they ain't taking it easy at all, don't look like. McClain trying to sneak up maybe to the outside of that 58. The 32 actually takes it a little bit easier in the corner. You can see McClain really putting, putting that right foot down in one and two. playing all over the back bumper. As I was looking out the rear bumper cam of, of hey, Cofield, McLean got up to the outside. Now he's going to look down to the inside and we're right back where we were. I don't imagine Cofield's going to let it go. Down to the inside, and I think McLean might have him clear here. He will, and here comes Stacy Holmes to the inside. He's going to follow him. Maybe look down to the inside of McLean. McLean going to try to close off that entry down on the bottom, and Stacy going to drive it up. And oh, he is loose as a goose coming off the corner into the inside wall. No caution. And we stay green as Stacy Holmes gets loose. And that 32 machine just comes right around. I don't think the damage is that bad, but he's going to need a caution. He is in trouble at this moment. So could have been a whole lot worse. And it looks like Cofield's going to lose a spot to Lucas Lyon as he had to lift there. But Stacy was wrecking right in front of him. And oh my goodness, here goes Lokovitz. He's making contact. Oh my goodness, he can't stop. Just. Just weevil wobbling all over the place. 
And you can see just how much losing that momentum hurts you as Lokovic's going to fall back to the 14th position. But it is getting tied up front. That kind of changed what the, the front of the pack was like. Chris McClain will gladly take that clean air and he'll have a teammate behind him. Garrett Kinder up to the 16th position already. But we've got a little pack of six cars that has pulled away here, uh, starting with Chris McClain and ending with Aaron Adcock. And then you got Daniel Cunningham back here in the seventh position. We saw him maybe burn his stuff up a little bit last run. So we'll see if he's maybe just trying to take it a little bit easier. You can see he's all the way off the throttle, then back on, taking it real, real easy through one and two. And somebody I'm going to check right here, and that's Brandon Wallace. Because if there was a fuel a fuel mileage strategy play, uh, Brandon Wallace would be the one to be doing it. So we'll see if he's doing any kind of clutching or lifting or what he's doing. And I don't see nothing, so... If he, if he feels like he can make it, it's probably, oh, my goodness, there we go again. Lokovic just having terrible, terrible handling issues in that 79 machine. And it's going from bad to worse as something is wrong with that 79. He had got loose a couple times, and now it's struggling. But he has saved it. He had lost it yet. So good, good couple saves up front. This starting to the, the pack is starting to tighten up a little bit. Cofield has been able to get back around Tracy Passens. And now Lucas Lyon maybe looking down to the inside. Tracy says, oh, you're not there just yet. And he's going to hold on to that third spot for now. But, yeah, I mean, just so early, the only 11 laps in, they're still close to being wide open outside of the entry of one. And so you can get these massive runs, and you're just playing a game of, how hard do I push it? You know, uh, do I push it really hard to try to get that track position and maybe burn up my tires? Or do I save my tires and possibly lose the draft or, or lose track position and not be able to get it back later? It is a uh, definite chess match that you're seeing right now. And you're seeing folks like Daniel Cunningham, Alan Nash, Kyle Roberts, those guys back there just taking it easy. And we saw at the end of that run uh, with Cofield and McLean got side by side the – uh, the second pack was able to close in very quickly. So if they get up here and get to battling, we may see that happen again. Cofield peeking up to the outside. Here he comes down to the three and four. McLean thought about trying to defend that inside line, but could not quite do it. Cofield going down to the inside. Cofield wants to retake the lead. Garrett Kinder back up to 11th as they're still side by side. I can't imagine either one of these guys is going to give an inch here. McLean really up the track. We've seen that bite a couple guys. It gets really loose up there if you're not careful. I know he wants to hang on to this lead, but at what cost? But I tell you what, it's going to close everybody in. Look at Tracy passes up on the outside. It's a two-by-two two race up here for the top four. It looks like Cofield might be able to clear him. Not quite, it didn't look like. We'll see if he can do it right down into one and two. I think he's going to have him cleared this time. And he does. So the 58 will retake the lead. Now the race is on for third. Lucas Lyon down to the inside. Lucas started outside the top 10 and now up to third. So he is on the move. No wasted momentum out of that 48 machine, and that's what you got to do. A lot of big movers. Kyle Roberts, Allen Nash, both up eight and nine spots, res respectively. Uh, Lucas Lyon and Ray Rogers up eight and nine spots, too. So guys are really moving. Ray Rogers all over the back bumper of Lucas here. As McLean starting to fall back here later in this run. I like to show some more onboard shots, but man, it is a pack of cars here. Is Ray Rogers going to push up the track a little bit, able to stall, stay off McLean, but Lucas going to take over the second spot. 
and they get single file again. But here comes Aaron Adcock down to the inside. He's got Daniel Cunningham talking about Cunningham, saving his tires a little bit. They get side by side racing, and now that little second group has joined this front pack. It was about this point last run that we started seeing a lot of separation. Uh, Cofield at the right time, I think, took the lead because now the tire's going to start to fall off. It's going to be tough to run him back down, I think, and get a run to even pass him. So being out front at this point in the run is a massive advantage. We'll see if anybody has been able to save enough to do anything with it. But now all single file at the moment. Watch it on board with Aaron as he's trying to stay with this top five. You see a couple guys running side by side. It looks like Ray Rogers and Chris McClain. McClain fighting to stay in the top three, but it is getting tough. And you see just as soon as they pull out and go too wide, Aaron Atkott gets a massive drive up to those guys, and it starts to separate the top two from the rest of these group of drivers. So it's a tough deal. You feel like maybe, you know, okay, is this guy going to hold me up? If you, if you be too nice, sometimes you end up going uh, going backwards. Just try to stay behind somebody as their tires start to fade. So you have to make that decision. Is he fading back or can I get behind him and just stay in line? It's, uh, it is always a tough call because if he has some trouble or if he starts to fade back and you lose that draft, you could be looking at uh, a rough, rough 50 laps or so. Checking on Garrett Kinder, here he is, back in the 11th position. He hasn't really gained much since then. Uh, after he got to the 11th, he's kind of been riding back here, but he is just two and a half seconds off the lead. You can see he's kind of have, kind of has the uh, the draft of the lead pack, so doesn't have to get it all at once. Just has to slowly chip away, go down pit road under this uh, uh, pit stop that they'll have down the line and continue to pick him off, so he is doing all right. We got a battle for second, though, as here comes Ray Rogers to the inside of Lucas Lyons. Got a massive run, and Ray, I tell you, man, is one of the, one of the best drivers at, at Texas. He loves this track, and he'll tell you. He said, man, I, I sure do love it, and he is good here. Got a lot of wins at this track, and he is on the hunt for another one here tonight as he has gone all the way from 13th to 2nd in just 50 laps and now going to run down Jonathan Cofield and I think this will be a heavyweight battle worth watching. Cofield out to about a four tenths of a second lead as those two were side by side so I expect these two to kind of maybe run him down as they get a little drafting help here. Running side by side is just uh, really detrimental. We'll see as they cross the line what uh, Ray Rogers is able to do as far as lap time, but it definitely looks like he is catching him. Yeah, he definitely is. I mean, he has closed quite a bit here. He was two-tenths of a second faster than Cofield that last lap. Got a huge toe, uh, but he's also a tenth faster than anybody else on the track. Uh, the next person that is closest to him in time was Chris McClain, who was a tenth and a half slower. So Ray Rogers got a massive run he has just saved his stuff and you can see Cofield get a little bit loose here here we go Ray Rogers gonna might try to uh try to strike here see if he does that go look down to the inside and a driver like Ray Rogers you know Cofield is a fantastic driver but whenever you see that guy start to lose the rear end it's really like, I mean, you see Apex Shark right there. It's like shark in blood-infested waters. Is Ray Rogers can see that he's getting a little bit loose in three and four, and, and he doesn't have to go and try to pass him, try to force Cofield into a small mistake. He's got about three-tenths behind him, so he can just kind of hang around on the bumper and say, hey, I saw you got loose a couple laps ago. 
Uh, we'll see if you can hang on to it. And you see how well he's getting into one and two. It actually tries to pull down off the corner and try to get that run and go to the inside, but could not quite do it. But he's going to lay on the 58's bumper right here, push some air on the rear of that truck. Cofield, though, the last couple laps, having no issue with it, been able to adjust. Boy, I tell you what, I am tickled pink as uh, last week it was a mess. This week, it, really good racing. Uh, some some chess matches going on. Uh, love to see this long green flag run. A lot of green flag racing. This is what we'd love to see in Apex. This is what is we normally see out of out of Apex. Uh, last week, I just I don't think really doesn't really tell the tale about how these guys race in this series. Crossing over almost to halfway here tonight and just 45 minutes into this race. Boy, I love that. Mm. Ray Rogers continues to put the pressure on, trying to get Cofield into a mistake, and he definitely feels faster. If he was felt like he was losing time, I think he'd be a little bit more aggressive to try to get around him. Um... But I think he definitely feels like he has saved a little bit more tire than Cofield. You see right here off of two. Cofield actually does a really good job there of getting a good run off the top side. Ray has been a little bit better each and every time through one and two. We'll see this time by if he's able to do anything different. Garrett Kinder up into the 10th position now. See Ray Rogers getting a little bit lower. It looks like Cofield trying a little arc on exit. Ray catches him in two, but you see Ray kind of pushes up the track and loses some of that momentum as he has to cross that rear bumper of Cofield. So when I said this is going to be a heavyweight match, uh, I think it definitely is. Oh, Cofield's going to get loose right here in the middle of the corner. This may be the opportunity for Ray Rogers to strike, but... His run actually kind of dies as he comes off the corner, so may have to scrub off just a little bit of speed. But here is the battle for the lead. It continues on. Ray Rogers not giving up. Ray, Ray is all over the back bumper of that 58. While that's happening, Lucas Lyon is starting to, to run these guys back down, and Aaron Atcock has uh, made a pass for the fourth position, so he is up in fourth. And Chris McLean is right now trying just about anything. He was running up the high line in one and two, just trying anything to see if he can find a little bit of speed out of that uh, five machine, starting to fade here as they're 33 laps on this set of tires. Here we go. Lucas Lyon has joined the battle. Ray Rogers did not want to see that. He wanted to be able to have uh, Jonathan Cofield all to himself, but uh, now it's a party. Hey, with a, a pit stop still looming, um... It's not really hurting Ray Rogers to kind of run behind the 58 as long as he's not losing ground. You know he's going to have a pit stop to try to gain some of it back. Lucas gets right to the back bumper on entry of one and two, and, and Ray gets a little bit loose off the corner. Maybe see if Lucas has got to run enough to dive down to the inside. He's going to look. And he's going to get that nose there, and I think Ray wanted to kind of cut him off, but felt like that uh, – he kind of respected that uh, it's still kind of early in the race. But look at how much Cofield's able to pull away as they run side by side. I'm just incredible how that, what difference that makes. And, and Ray going to really kind of make it exponential. He's going to go down to the inside and try to take over this spot again. And Cofield loving this. I, I just, uh, 
these guys are great racers, but I think sometimes ego gets in the way of just a little bit. And who am I to criticize Lucas and Ray? But you kind of look at Cofield pulling away now over half a second. It's still gaining. He's two tenths of a second faster than these guys. You got to wonder, like, it's at one point do you just let it go and say, hey, I'm going to just try to keep up with Cofield here and not battle it out and lose him. But uh, Ray Rogers going to take the spot back. But Lucas, as Ray gets a little bit loose, yeah, I mean, this is uh, – <laughs> this this is uh this is what Cofield wants to see. Oh, Cofield coming down pit road. So pit stops starting here. Uh, Cofield and Aaron Acock come down pit road to make their stop. I think a couple drivers have already made it. I think uh, Cofield, Johnny Cofield, Josh Lokovitz have made their stop. Uh, Alan Smith is down on pit road now as well as he's leaving just, just at the moment. And Chuck Feltz, Garrett Kinder have all come down and made their stop. So Lucas will inherit the lead for the moment. Um, we'll see who decides to run it a little bit longer. Here comes Lucas down on the pit road. And ooh, he's going to have to get on the, the brakes really hard. Slides the rear out. The little Tokyo drift into the ent entrance of pit road. Um, so it looks like Ray may try to run a little bit long here. We'll see how long he runs. I think as you... We'll see what he decides to do. We'll see if he comes this time. It's always such a tough and interesting idea because we don't know exactly how long they can go, and it looks like he is coming in right now. It seems like if you wait a couple laps, is oh, he is going to be close. I don't know if he made it down to speed. It's going to be real close for the 51. We'll see. But he waited a couple more laps. I don't know if I like that. I think if you can run longer, you want to go a little bit more. We'll see where he comes out, if he has a good stop. But uh, I think Cofield will definitely cycle around to the lead. He has a massive lead after just that one lap. He's got a 3.5 second lead over Chris McClain currently. And he's coming around now, and here comes Ray Rogers out of pit road. He's got to go all the way down, get up to speed, go all the way around to the back stretch. But here it comes. Cofield coming through the trial. Well, now he will retake the lead, and that's two laps difference right there for Cofield. Comes down first, and now he has a massive, massive lead. Now, Garrett Kinder did come down about three laps ago. He was able to jump up to the third position as Lucas did not have a great pit stop. And he falls back to six. So, Garrett Kinder been able to recover. He's going to be on the... Uh, it's going to be tough for him from here on out. So they'll have to make one more stop, it looks like. But Garrett's going to be under fire for a while. It seems like um, one or two laps makes a pretty big difference here. And why that is is because in three and four, you can go wide open on fresh tires. But as the tires start to wear, you have to start lifting in three and four. So if you're one lap ahead you have that, that three and four for a little bit longer. That's why Cofield got out to such a massive lead. And you see Ray Rogers there at the bottom of your screen. He is holding on to second. Had a good stop on and off pit road. But you can hold it wide open for a while. Then once you start having to lift those guys who pitted a little bit later, they'll be able to make up some of that time. Look at Lucas. He is moving. Goes right up past Aaron Adcock. Going to try to take over another spot. These guys trying to work together. Try to catch up to Ray Rogers as Lucas, though, is not having any of it. Lucas still down on the inside. He is battling with Chris McLean. Garrett Kinder is going to push up the track right in front of McLean. That's going to give Lucas everything he needs to get down to the inside of the 13. 13, like I said, on two lap older tires. And you can see the difference that it makes. So Garrett's going to settle probably right around in the sixth position, sixth or seventh. So that's a net gain for the 13. He'll still have one more stop at least. So Lucas going to retake the third position, going to lead this little pack here as they are about half a second back from Ray Rogers. Everybody did pretty much the same on pit road. 
Uh, all the pit stops were relatively close. Ray Rogers had the fastest uh, pit stop time. Uh, but Jonathan Cofield had, a, I mean, a lightning fast entry and exit. So he spent 38 seconds on pit road. Ray Rogers, who was really good, he spent 38.4 seconds on the pit road. And that is enough to make up a ton of difference once you factor in that he came in a couple laps earlier. Now, the tricky thing is that Ray's going to have two lap pressure tires. We'll see if Cofield can save enough or if Ray can maybe run him down. But I think three seconds is a lot to ask. I think Ray's going to have some trouble to run him back down. So right now, Garrett going to be under fire from Aaron Adcock. Starting to see him slip back just a little bit. As he gets into the lap 10 to 15 range, he has to lift a little bit more than these guys. He can't run full, fully wide open in three and four anymore. He has to lift just a little bit more. And that's all time loss at a track like this is so momentum based. And you can see the gap between McLean and Garrett. So, but it, I think his, his idea worked though. He came down pit road early. He was able to, to get in front of some guys and he is going to net, like I said, a couple spots uh, just from doing that. We'll see if he can maintain it all the way to the end of this run. Is they ran about 40 laps um, on that last little last little run. Well, this pack has caught Ray Rogers as Ray gets really out of shape as the the 48 gets right to his back bumper, and Ray gonna lose it. But here comes McLean down to the inside of the 48. Not quite able to get to the inside as Lucas able to hold him off. And he'll hold on to that second spot. They are about a tenth faster than your leader. But I think that will cycle out. And kind of start to plateau out pretty quickly in just the next five laps or so. So I think Cofield's got to be feeling pretty good about where he is being so far out front. These guys are all nose to tail and they're kind of battling too. Um, and we've seen that already. Anytime somebody pulls out. They kind of, it's almost like the cup car where they just kind of yoink each other back with that side draft, and uh, that just eats up so much time. And what's funny in these situations is that you'll have the you'll have the guy out front always wants you to just hang around behind him and, and let's we got to run down the leader stop trying to race me it's always the guy out front that wants to do that and the guy behind him he wants to get out front and then once he gets out front hey guys just just run behind me and we'll catch up to the leader that's the way it always goes so i'm sure lucas is like hey just stay behind me guys as he passes everybody to get up there Lucas does not have a good turn three and four. Man, McLean had a big run, but just maybe didn't know where to go with it. And he kind of shuffled up off of the exit of four. Now he's got a big run here, but they are nose to tail as Ray Rogers has kind of clung to the back of this little group. Lead down to 2.4 seconds. So they are definitely hauling the mail. And honestly, if I'm Cofield, I'm feeling really great because I – can run a little bit easier and let them catch up, you know? Hey, you know, dangle that carrot out just a little bit and say, hey, y'all catch up. Y'all are catching. Y'all go harder, you know? Run them trucks a little bit harder. And then as you get to about, I don't know, 1.5 seconds, so the draft is not really activated yet, then start to hammer it down a little bit as, man, Chris McClain gets really loose off of turn two. But, yeah, Cofield let them get to about 1.5 seconds and start hammering down and – uh start to extend that lead back out. But, man, what great racing that we're seeing here tonight. Lots of uh, strategy play. Draft being a, a pretty big part of this one. Garrett Kinder settling into that fifth position. And, man, what a what a great recovery for him. He's starting to pull away just a little bit from Poe Man teammates Aaron Adcock. Tracy passes. <laughs> Tracy was uh, completely sideways off of turn two there, just hauling the mail. But just continue to watch these three as they try to run down Cofield. That that gap 
was closing, but is slowly starting to equalize as uh, Luke is still a little bit faster, uh, but not by much. It's not enough to really be a big difference. I think Cofield is settling in here, and he is going to have complete control of this race in the next five laps or so. Now, Ray will have the, the better tires to the end of this run. He'll have a couple laps better than some of these drivers. You see him go down to the inside of Chris McClain. Uh, so we'll see if anybody goes long or who short pits this time. Uh, short pitting. You know, they both have their... They both have their advantages, but I like running long here uh, on this one. They still have a long way to go, so I, I, don't, think if you, I don't think you can really run long. Uh, you're just not going to have enough time to make the time back up as we're just 36 laps to go and they'll have to make one more stop so uh, the big question is when you do that i think if you run long you're not going to be have be able to take advantage of that uh, and those who pitted sooner are going to be able to eat you up uh so you know i'm expecting to see one of these guys i think ray rogers will probably run it all the way out as he's been really strong on the long run you see he's putting pressure now on lucas lines we'll see if he's got anything for the leader but i think if you're lucas or chris mcclain i think you got to come down early probably come down right at uh gosh i'd say probably right at lap 100 as there goes ray rogers down to the inside now he can set his sights on the leader he was definitely faster at the end of the run last time, and we'll see if he can run him down. But I, I would expect to see guys come down pit road with about 15 laps. We may see somebody run long to try to catch a caution. I think that would be a um, about the only reason why you would do that is if you run a little bit longer here, run to 105, maybe 110, you're just not going to have a whole lot of time to make that ground back up. So I'd be interested to see what the winning strategy will be. Right now, I think Cofield kind of controls everything at the moment. He's got 2.1 second lead over Ray Rogers, and he can dictate when guys come down pit road. Cautions are not flying. We've had a couple guys wreck, but uh, no cautions for it. So I think Cofield has a lot of strength here. If he starts to feel like Ray Rogers is running him down, he is within the pit window. Uh, so as, if Ray gets to him about half a second, he can come on pull off down pit road and maybe force the other guys to come down as well. Uh, and then Ray then has to make the decision, does he run a, little, a couple more laps or does he come in with, with Cofield? That'll be a tough call. But Cofield has to cross the line. Ray Rogers was about a tenth faster uh, last lap. So he is cutting into that lead just ever so slightly. See Ray coming to the picture there right at the end. So he's definitely going to run him down, it looks like. I mean, Ray has been really strong. He's always strong late in the run. Um, so that's no surprise. But it, it really going to see. It really depends on what Cofield decides to do. Back here for third. Chris McClain now taking that spot back from Lucas. Lucas was very aggressive early and now starting to fade maybe just a little bit. As you can see how quickly it those tires start to, to go away. Ooh, they make a little bit of contact down the, the back straightaway. These guys have been racing really, really hard. Side by side, clicking over to lap 90. They're just 30 laps to go in this race. As they continue to race side by side for third. Ray Rogers now down to 1.7 seconds behind Jonathan Cofield. Eric Kinder falling back to seventh now, but I still think a net, a definitely net positive on that. Ooh, Chris McClain going to get a little bit loose there on entry. Trying not to wash up the track into Lucas. Trying to save it, and he does, so Lucas will hang on to that third spot for now. You can see this little group of trucks trying to stay in this thing. They are definitely... Not in the same zip code of Donna Cofield and Ray Rogers. 
Uh, but I think they do have something for the top three. Or the uh, for, for third and fourth. It's Tracy, man. He looks really loose going into the corner. Take a look at the track temp at the moment. 79 degrees. Good Lord. I'm actually impressed on how... How is that possible? How is it possible to be 79 degrees with these trucks running on? That is a chilly track for the air temp to be 74 degrees. That is weird. But we do have pit stops going on at the moment. Kyle Roberts, Alan Nash have come down to make their final stop with uh, 28 laps to go. And I would imagine that's going to bring in some guys in the mid-pack. We'll see when Cofield decides to take that left turn and come down pit road himself. Charles Stevens came in as well. As they come back out on the tracks, Stacy Holmes makes his stop. Stacy did get to use his fast repair on the last pit stop after uh, getting loose, hitting the wall, and had to go all the way to the back of the, the field, lost the draft, was able to work his way back up through it. And uh, a nice recovery for him. He is still he's, – he's one lap down because he pitted. Uh, we'll see if he can get into the top ten before this thing's over. Pretty nice recovery. Uh, I know he would have liked to have seen a caution at some point. As Lukovic is slow on the track, and, man, he is missing the front bumper of that 79 as he did make some contact with the wall. So, uh, Lukovic has been ha uh, just been on the struggle bus here tonight. Uh, that truck has not been handling the way he wants it. He'll be able to get the fast repair and get the truck fixed, but he is a couple laps down now, and uh, uh, it is not looking good for the 79 machine. Gary Kinder comes down pit road, gives up. That little bit of track position, going to keep on his strategy of coming in a little bit early. Slides through his box, though he, no, he actually gets in there perfectly. So 13 will get four tires fuel, jump back out there and see if he can't make something happen with that 13 machine. Now, Jonathan Cofield is getting passed by Stacy Holmes, who was able to get one of his laps back. But you can see Ray Rogers is closing in on that 58 machine. Last time by, Ray Rogers gained three tenths on the 58. There he goes. Going to make a quick left turn down on pit road. And, oh, my gosh, Christian Deadman is sitting sideways on the pit road entry. So, obviously, locked him up as he's, he's Austin powering the thing as he's trying to get it turned back around. And finally does. So, <laughs> Christian Deadman. Spins it coming down pit road. Let's see if we can maybe catch and see what happened. He's coming down pit road here. And as he gets on the brakes, you're gonna see whoop, rear tires just lock up too a little bit too low of a brake bias. And trying to get it settled back and uh not able to do it. Here comes Ray Rogers, not wasting any time. Knows how close he was, and he's gonna have 20 laps to get it done. And make up the difference. I think it's going to be close. I think I think Ray has been really good around the 25 to 30 lap range. And he's going to be going to be about 20 to get this thing done. So I think it's going to be real tough. You see Cofield now coming through three and four at the moment. Ray Rogers going to obviously lose out. Going to have to make up all that time. Ray there down on the inside. He's trying to get up through the gears, but Cofield going to drive right on by. And I think that Cofield has been pretty dang good for 20 laps, and that's all he's got to do. So Ray, Ray has been better, I think, um, around the 30-lap mark, but I think Cofield, his 20 laps is pretty dang good. And, and I think they're, both their pace is pretty similar, but a Cofield's going to have about a three-second lead, and I think that uh, – Cofield definitely has, can cover three seconds in 20 laps. So Cofield should cycle back around to the lead. Currently, though, Lucas Lyon is out front here. So uh, Cofield and Ray Rogers both a lap down at the moment as Alan Smith now makes his stop. And Cofield definitely wants to get around the 48 right here. This is a big, big moment. 
for the for Cofield because the caution comes out right now. He's going to get the lucky dog. But you don't want to rely on that. You want to go on around and get those set of tires. Look at him. Look at the difference between tires. Cofield actually gets loose there. So he's going to go right on around. So now he's good. Caution comes out. He will be able to come down and get tires, be third, if it does indeed come out. And here comes Lucas Lyon coming down pit road now to make his final stop of the race. So he gives up the lead and ooh, comes, comes down pit road very quickly. Brandon Wallace now will, will inherit the lead. Hasn't taken over the lead. He's going to pass Lucas right here, so he will take the lead now. Definitely has not do, done enough saving. He's not going to be able to make it to the end. Uh, maybe hoping that there is a caution that comes out that he can catch and it work out in his favor. And Lucas Lyon out of it as he has got a penalty. Came in. We saw him slide the, the tires, push it a little bit too hard. And he has got that 40-second hold. So he is going to have to wait, get four tires and fuel, then hold for 40 seconds. So tough deal there for Lucas. He was running, had a really good run, and just the worst time to have a speeding penalty, that's for sure. Brandon Wallace gives up the lead. And now Jonathan Cofield will take over that top spot. And he has got 17 laps to hold off Ray Rogers. And right now, they're running very similar lap times. It's 2.4 seconds is the difference. We'll see if uh, Ray can somehow pull a rabbit out of his hat and run that uh, 50 or 58 down. Uh, I, I, it's going to be real tough. Cofield has really been strong here in this race. Garrett Kinder talked about him. That first, that early, early wreck where he had major, major damage was able to Catch back up to the field, get that lucky dog, come down pit road, and what a great recovery he has had. And currently with 15 laps to go, he's running in third. Uh, he did come down a lap earlier than Tracy Passens. So he's going to start to fade here. Tracy might get around him, but I think, you know, Garrett might be able to hold on for a fifth place. We'll see. He's going to have to fight hard, though. He's at a disadvantage all the way to the end. It's going to be tough. Chris McLean. Went a little long on that last one. So he's going to have a hit of steam. Here comes Tracy down to the inside. He's trying to take over third spot. Garrett Kinder really not able to do much with it. Doesn't look like Tracy just drives right on by. As far as the lead battle goes, uh, it has really not changed much. You can see the gap, 2.3 seconds, 2.4 seconds. Last time by Ray Rogers was slightly faster, but not enough to really make up any ground. Um, Cofield this time runs a 30.382. Ray Rogers, 30.367. So it's not enough. It's not going to be enough time for Ray Rogers to run him down unless something changes quickly for the 58 machine there will be a point that Cofield's going to have to start lifting a little bit more in three and four and you'll see ray rogers definitely close the gap uh for a couple laps but uh, i just don't know if he's going to have enough time he needed uh damn near 35 laps to run him down last time uh i think it's going to be real tough to to make that happen here at the end of this thing so Cofield, all he's got to do is keep hitting his marks and if a caution doesn't come out i think that Cofield is going to be able to, to take home this victory and get three wins in a row in Apex. That's pretty impressive. I mean, he's got a – he's got like a we, – we have about 20 drivers that show up each week. And he's – so he's got like a three-race lead over second place. Um, so uh, just been lights out here. Now, you put Cofield out on the track with a smaller field and have him qualify up front, he is dang near unbeatable. And that has really been the tale of, the, of this season. He's got three wins. I don't think anybody has two. And he is looking to try to get that fourth one here tonight at Texas.
Chris McLean has been able to take over third spot from Tracy Passons and now Aaron Adcock. Going to go to the inside of Garrett Kenders. Garrett's going to have to settle for likely sixth place. He's going to have about 2.6 seconds back to Charles Stevens, who we haven't really talked about much here tonight, but he is. He started seven, then he's running seven. So. And we'll lead the battle for the lead up on the bottom right. You can also see it on the left side. So if, you, if you're, whatever the opposite of cross side is, if, you, if your eyes go out, you can see both of the, both of the lead lap battles. Daniel Cunningham going down to the inside of Allen Nash. Allen came down about 19 laps ago, so you're starting to see that those tires that uh, he put on starting to wear out about five laps different between those two. Cunningham on the freshest tires up here, and you can see what, what three, four laps of a difference makes is uh, Cunningham just drives right up by these guys. He's going to take over seventh spot. Now we go up here to fourth and fifth as Tracy passes there and Adcock going to battle it out for third or for fourth. On board with Aaron. Dives it down to the inside. And Tracy doesn't put up too much of a fight. Going to try to hold it here off the corner, but Aaron Atcock going to take over that spot. Back here at 12, you got Chuck Feltz. He's had a pretty good race. He started 12th. He's running 12th. Uh, so, not a bad run there for him. I don't know why it went back up to Cofield, but uh, regardless, he's running behind Stacy Holmes here, trying to run him down. He's got about five lap fresher tires than Stacy. He's getting a big run here. We'll see if he can get around him with five laps to go, get inside the 11th position. Be a good finish there for Chuck. The lead is down to 1.9 seconds, but just not going to have enough time Ray Rogers to run him down. See Stacy get a little bit loose there. Chuck getting ready to pounce with just a few laps to go. Stacy going to push up the track, and that's going to open the door for Chuck Feltz as he's going to look down to the inside, and we'll see if he can hold. That position down in three and four. Looks like that truck is driving really nice with those fresher tires. And he's going to take over the 11th position. Stacy going to look back to the inside, though. Tried to maybe take over. Try to go back to the inside. A little crossover there on Chuck. But you can see the, the tire difference. Chuck going to pull away ever so slightly. Up front, it is still Jonathan Cofield by 1.8 seconds, just four laps to go. And now he's thinking, please, no caution. No caution. Don't want to see a caution. Don't wreck, guys. And it's always a possibility. It just seems like as you get down to the end of the race, it seems like uh, guys just start letting go of the steering wheel or, you know, gassing it up for no reason. It just it always seems to happen. Even in real life, you know, you got somebody blowing a tire with three laps to go and you just wonder how. And uh, so that's what he's thinking about right now. He's got a fast truck. Got to feel confident no matter what. Uh, but it's so much easier just to be out here two seconds ahead of the next driver and get the dub. So coming around, coming to two laps to go for the 58. Katie win three in a row. I think he can. That lead has been extended back out to about 1.9 seconds as Cofield was a little bit faster last time by. Cunningham has been able to run down Garrett Kinder as they battle side by side. White flag is out, though. 
or is about to be. Cofield coming through the start finish line now. White flag is out for Jonathan Cofield. One more lap to go. As Kyle Roberts did wreck on the track, but no caution came out. <laughs> uh, I can see the incidents up on my, my screen. He had some sort of contact off track, but we stay, stay green. And we ran all the way. Stage caution, the only caution here tonight. Green flag, pit stops, green flag racing makes up for Martinsville, but Cofield, three in a row as he wins here at Texas. Well, I'll tell you what, what a nice race after last week. It's just a nice, easy going race. Multiple green flat pit stops. You just love to see it. And Cofield gets it done here tonight with great strategy and a great drive to get win three in a row. Really impressive. Gets a little bump from Brandon Wallace, and he'll burn it down here. On the front stretch, celebrate. And we'll talk to him right after this. Let's go to a, a short commercial break. We'll be right back. All right, back here at Texas Motor Speedway, and we're going to jump right into interviews. I know those guys after last week need a break and would like to get out of here pretty early, so we're going to get them out of here. And Cofield, man, you come into this race, you qualified on the pole, you, you led a lot of laps, and you're able to take home the victory here tonight. Three races in a row, man. How does it feel? Yeah, man, feels good. Uh, may have to give these little guys, these guys a little bit of a break. But... Uh-oh. Uh, now, uh, can't hear Cofield at Ray the Rob moment. I don't know if there's something wrong What's with that? his mic or it might be me. I don't know. Cofield, can, can you, hear, you hear, me hear me? I can hear you. It is definitely, definitely me. Hang on one second, brother. It looks like a Windows update got me. Hold on one second. Cofield, you got me? Yeah, I can hear you. All right. Yeah, that was my fault. Windows update messed up my discord i'm sure i'm sure the broadcast heard you just fine go ahead sorry about that no it was a it was a good race uh probably need to give these guys a little bit of a break <laughs> no i'm just kidding but uh yeah ray rogers i was i was worried about a caution there toward the end you know usually five laps to go you know my luck coming to the white flag get a caution because ray rogers he he had saved some tires or something back there he was starting to catch me but uh had some good pit stops. I think that's where I made some made some good time up. But a uh, good clean race by everybody. Yeah, I mean, after last week, I mean, gosh, uh, well, it's really nice to have a race like this where you just kind of yeah. it's re more relaxing. So, I, you know, I, I you know, it, it, it's just a completely different on the opposite end of the spectrum. So, I mean, talk a little bit about how nice it is to come to a race and be able to focus on you know, pit strategy, getting on and off pit road, getting the, you know, when to come down pit road, when to stay out, uh, all those type of, how far to, you know, how hard to push early to fight those guys, you know, how far you want to fall back. So a lot of strategy that was able to be done that you couldn't do last week. So talk a little bit about that. Yeah, last week, you know, just a bad track for, for leagues and I racing, you know, nothing against Martinsville, you know, it's just everybody's breaking points. But yeah, good clean race here. Uh, you really didn't have any, I mean, there was some fuel strategy, but we uh we had three sets of tires, so every time you had to pit, you know, take a set of tires, there wasn't no saving a set or nothing like that. So, uh, but yeah, it was nice, kind of, you know, after that stage break, just get in the zone, um, try to hit your marks, you know. Uh, me on these mile and a half, you know, usually you run the first ten laps wide open. I try not to do that. Uh, I try to run 
three quarter throttle or something, you know, to say it, it, it saves the tires just a little bit, but, uh, saved, saved enough tonight to, uh, to beat these guys. All right. Well, congratulations on win number three as always, man, who you got to thank. No, I want to thank you uh, for doing the broadcast. Uh, as always, uh, Jimmy at Apex, uh, y'all go check them out for button boxes. All kind of good stuff, man, they got over there. Really appreciate them sponsoring the league. Uh, Great American Grit uh, Apparel Company, uh, Chuck Phelps for the Pole Award, Low Cash Motorsports, Kinder Farmer Ranch for the uh, records replays we didn't have tonight, but still appreciate them guys. Uh, Pole Man Motorsports, uh, SM Racing Products, Cofield Asphalt Refinishing, Cofield Supply and Service, and all my teammates at Pandas. All right. Well, there you have it. Your winner here tonight, Jonathan Cofield, three in a row, and he's going to extend that points lead that he has even further. Well, let's go ahead and jump into the second place finisher. Talk to him. Ray Rogers started in the back pretty much in about 13th position, and he drove up through the field, and you looked like you were doing pretty good, and then that last run just could not close it, uh, close it down. But a pretty good race. Talk about it. Yeah, I was, you know, just trying to make my way through there. Track was slippery, so I had to be patient getting around everyone. But, um, God, man, that, just before we pitted that, you know, not the last time, but the time before that, I should have took my opportunity to try to get around Cofield. had so many runs on him. I probably could have got around him, but I was just being patient because we were both on old tires. So I didn't want to take a chance of taking me and him both out, but, um, and I, I think I really killed it when I didn't pit the last time when he pitted. I went around one more time, and that gave him that extra second because I think I closed to like 1.2 seconds. Mm -hmm. And then this, that second time, I didn't pit with him, and it just extended it. And, you know, I was hoping he would hit the apron like I did like 14 times, but he didn't. He ran a perfect race, so I just wasn't able to catch back up to him. Yeah, you know, not much you could do. It just – uh you know, did you think about trying to undercut him on that last pit stop? I thought about it. I was like, well, my theory was was just to pit with him. But, then, you know, it, I, my pit strategies are always horrible. I never pit when I'm supposed to pit, and I probably should have done that because that would have helped me make up the time that I lost to him the first time we pitted. But, <laughs> once again, I'm, I'm horrible at knowing when to pit and when not to pit. Yeah, I mean, ifs and buts, candy nuts, we'd all have a Merry Christmas. And sometimes you have to make the best call for yourself. And, uh, you know, I, I don't know why I'm, I'm acting like you did something wrong. You finished second, Ray. That's pretty good. And you gained more spots than anybody on the track. So you definitely had the speed. Um, you know, a late caution there might have been nice. Love to see how y'all go head to head there. But uh, come up a little bit short, but it's good to see you, Ray. Glad to have you on track. And um, second place here, not so shabby. Uh, so congratulations for that. But uh, who you got to thank here tonight? I, all the sponsors for the series, you know, Apex Sim Racing, Sim Gear. I mean, they, you know, obviously they are the sponsors, so we appreciate them. You know, Aaron, who puts this all on for us, you who put the broadcast on so we can go back and watch it later. It's always fun to to, to listen how you broadcast it. And uh, just like I say, all the sponsors that, that make this happen every week. So I appreciate all of them. Well, all right, there you have it. Ray Rogers comes home in second place. We got to get Chris McLean in here, our third place finisher. Chris, man, you had a great run, started out on the front row and uh, fell back just a little bit. But man, what a great drive there at the end to recover um, and come out with those fresh tires and be able to pass those guys towards the end and get that final podium spot. That five truck looked pretty fast. What uh, what maybe more did you need to be up there and and try to stay with Cofield? uh somebody else calling the pit strategy because uh, that's where we lost it for sure uh, it was definitely a fun race uh you know cofield and lucas and ray and you know i think ray drove from the back but it was uh it was fun there battling and and just got in a little bit of a hornet's nest there i was just trying to run a clean race and uh i i didn't come down pit road on the second and third stops like i should have I run a couple extra laps just to get the space on track to keep from getting run over or what what have you? But it really it really cost you here at Texas doing that. And uh, I and I really thought some of them guys took two tires. I lost so much time on that last run because I think I went three extra laps or something like that. And uh, Garrett and Aaron and all of them got by me, and I just I couldn't believe because I had a 38 second stop as far as the whole deal, and which was one of the faster ones. And I just I, I couldn't figure it out, and I guess that's what it was. But uh. Yeah, big shout out to uh, Cofield, that side by side battle we had there on the first run. Good clean racing and uh Ray, man, he's 
I know Jonathan won the race and he did a great job, but Bray's the king of Texas. I don't know how he rips the bottom of one and two and keeps the tires on it like he does, but I ain't never had nothing for him at Texas. And uh, I really thought he was going to go up there and get it. But I think Ray had a little bit of the same problem. He, he pitted a lap after uh, a lap or two after Cofield and that was able to just stretch it out. And it's hard to run him down at Texas once you get, you know, 10 or 15 laps on the tires. It just gets super slick. But uh, all in all, had a pretty good race. We've missed several races this year. And the two races we did make, we didn't we didn't fare per, very well. So uh, to be back on the podium, third race in, I, I think it's doing pretty good. So now we just got to go out there and get the win. There you go. Well, uh, a great finish tonight. Great, uh, great recovery there on the end. You know, kind of fall back and then come down pit road and, and charge back to third, man. You know, I always say if you get an interview, that's pretty much as good as winning. So congratulations on that. Who you got to thank here tonight? Yeah, ain't no doubt. I appreciate it. Uh, give a big shout out to uh, Aaron and the boys over at Poe Man. Aaron puts this deal on. It's always fun to come in here and race with these guys. It's good, clean fun. Uh, all the sponsors, Apex, Jimmy over there. Uh, big shout out to you on the broadcast. You always do a great job. I always enjoy going back and watch the race and try to figure out where I was getting beat or where I could be a little better, which I know I know what happened tonight, but uh, it's always fun to go back and watch it. You do a great job. Well, we appreciate that. But there you have it. Third place, Chris McLean. We're going to get him out here early uh, tonight so because uh, I know Martinville was a, a, a struggle. But, uh, man, what a fantastic race. What a fun, fun race and a far cry from last week. Uh, I know I've said that many a time. Let's take a look at the results where everybody finished that one caution. How about that? 14 lead changes, one caution, and that was a stage caution. Can't beat it. Well, Cofield, Rogers, McLean, your top three. Aaron Adcock comes away with a fourth place finish. Tracy Passons with the top five. Daniel Cunningham in six. Garrett Kinder recovered after that initial uh, contact with the inside wall was seventh place. That's pretty good, like that. He needed a caution. He would have been back in it, but he was playing from behind. And uh, But seventh place, pretty good recovery. Charles Stevens comes home in eighth. Ninth, Alan Nash. And round out your top ten is Chuck Felt. Let's go, Chuck. Get that top 10. In 11th, going to be Stacy Holmes in 12th, Alan Smith. Uh, these guys all had good races, improvement on their qualifying spots. Kyle Roberts comes home in 13th. Brandon Wallace in 14th. Matt Rogers in 15th. Johnny Cofield in 16th. Christian Deadman in 17th. Lucas Lyon with that uh, pit speed and penalty. No, he's disappointed. going to come home in 18th position. Lokovitz in 19th. Anthony Edgerton in 20th. And Jeremiah, Jeremiah Holt is in 21st. Well, all right. Well, that'll do it here tonight. I want to thank Apex Sim Racing, ApexSimRacing.com for their support of this series. Uh, definitely appreciate Jimmy. Go check them out, ApexSimRacing.com, ApexSimRacing.com, ApexSimRacing.com. I'm Eddie Smith. This is VSRN. We're going to get out of here. We will see you all next week.